scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Your decisions, comma, more than your conditions decide the quality of your life. Your decisions, more than your conditions, decide the quality of your life. More than the conditions of a man, the principal determinant of the kind and the quality of destiny that you and I will be able to be featured in is our decisions. Indecision is a decision to fail. Indecision is a decision to fail. Write this down, please. Decisions decide destiny. Decisions, not wishes, not intentions. Decisions decide destiny. A man's destiny the quality of it is not decided by his wish it's not decided by his intentions he's not even decided by the wishes that others have for him your destiny is primarily and principally decided by the decisions that you make I learned this many years ago when I read a book by Dr. Miles Munro called Discovering Your Potentials. It was a book that had such a profound impact upon my life and it was from that book alongside many other teachings I found out that there is a responsibility dimension to an enviable destiny that more than a prophetic dimension more than the speakings of God over the life and the destiny of an individual there is a responsibility dimension there is a responsibility component to your destiny that means if you must excel in life as much as God desires for you to excel it does not just take God alone as powerful as he is it will take your partnership through the ability to make quality choices and decisions. Please look up everybody, lend me your attention. You are seated here this morning because you decided to be here. Is that true? There probably are a number of things you would have been doing right now that may also hold some level of importance in your life. But based on your perception of the value and the importance of this conference, you left everything and many of you inconvenience yourself in a very great way to be here. It is a decision. You are hearing what you are hearing and sitting directly under this anointing and under this ministration because you decided to. Decisions are powerful. Look up, please. Even at the extent of your eternal destiny, God leaves you to decide. At the detriment of your eternal destiny, 
God, the God of heaven will not force salvation on you. The God of heaven will not force success on you. There are many people today going to hell. Even though the price for sin, the price for our victory, the price for reconciliation with God has been fully paid. Their decisions. There are many people who are living poor and beggarly lives, even in the wealthiest of nations, primarily because of their decisions. When I found out the place and the role that decisions play in actualizing destiny, I made up my mind that I will intentionally make quality decisions that advance my life. Write this down, please. Destiny is measured in time. Write it down, please. Destiny is measured in time. That means the unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving a portion of your life and a portion of your destiny to. Anything at all, good or bad, whatever you invest your time in, you are investing a portion of your life and your destiny. Our Father in the Lord today has become a global phenomenon and a voice, a force to reckon with and a, a personality to be studied by individuals, by institutions, government of nations, not just because God called him, not just because God anointed him, but because he made a decision with his life that this was the course of destiny he was going to pursue and he obtained grace from God and even in old age he continues to pursue it diligently. All of the people you see today that you admire, whether in business, whether in ministry, whether in politics, whether in the academia, they are individuals who at one point or the other decided that they were going to make a quality decision to advance their lives. A very interesting scripture in the Bible, I will just quote it for the sake of time. Every time I've studied this scripture, that scripture for me is the most graphic representation of the power of decisions is a story that Jesus himself gave a parable of one we call the prodigal son everybody say the prodigal son by way of summary the Bible starts that story by letting us know that a man had two sons and he let us know that he was a responsible man who took care of his children and then one day the younger son, the Bible says, made up his mind that he did not want to be under the influence of his father again. A decision. He made that decision. And he said, no, father, I, I am tired of your influence. Give me that which is due me as your son. And the father respected his decision. The Bible says when he was given his own portion of the inheritance, he departed and the next thing we hear about that man is a plethora of tragedies the Bible says he spent his money on a riotous life with friends and that man began to deplete for every decision he took out of the influence of his father it began to lead him and plunge him further and further to a life of shame embarrassment degradation until he got to a point where he was completely bankrupt are we still here and then the bible tells us that he got to a point where he was feeding with swine look at the implication of decisions this was a man who was excelling under the authority of his father but he made just one decision father i am tired of your influence i want to manage my life a few years down the line he has become an object of tragedy, a caution, and a warning to many. Feeding with swine, 
whereas he had been dining with royalty but then the bible also shows us the power of decisions to reverse a man's life one day the bible says this young man got tired and he said to himself in fact the bible says he came to himself here's what he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here feeding with the swine and he made a decision again so it takes a decision to change a decision listen carefully he made one decision and that decision took him down but he made one other decision what was the decision i will arise and i will go to my father and when i meet him i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven and i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants he made that decision and he began to take steps to honor that decision now notice the miracle that happened he never met the father at home and the father never met him at the place of his wrong decision both of them met at the place of action somewhere in the middle the father was already leaving to look for him and the son can i be honest with you everything you are looking for is also looking for you the great destiny you are looking for is also looking for you but there is a version of you that destiny is looking for that you have not yet become the father was not looking for the rebel the father was looking for the transformed gentleman your destiny is not looking for the unserious careless like a desical individual is looking for a determined gentleman a determined lady everything you are looking for is looking for you the prosperity you are looking for is also looking for you the greatness you are looking for is also looking for you the mantle you are looking for is also looking for you but there are conditions midwifing your present condition and your future destiny is a decision you can make a decision that will reverse your destiny by many 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 years and you can take one decision that will fast track your destiny by many decades decisions are powerful i hope you know that in every territory there are a group of parliamentarians that we call honorable members of the house or senate members and all that happens in the parliament of every nation is decisions that's all they do decisions decisions that culminate to the well-being of the citizens within a territory or decisions that are motivated by self-centeredness that continue to take the nation or the territory backwards in any case people move forward or backward through decisions your decision is the vehicle that moves you from where you are to the place of destiny your decision is also the vehicle that takes you from where you are back to your yesterday now listen to me listen very carefully you do not have the power to choose consequences no man has the power to choose consequences a consequence is an outcome of a decision the resultant effect of a decision you cannot choose consequences good or bad what you can choose or what you can do is that you can make choices and decisions it is the decisions that choose your consequences for instance when you say I want to be rich um you are right but technically speaking you are not exactly right you don't just say i want to be rich alone you make the decisions that make for such a destiny and you naturally evolve into that state in life
I want to be a visionary and responsible leader. As good as that is, if it just stops by you speaking and, say, and staying there, you may never amount to that which you desire. It will take decisions as the vehicles that move you. So men do not choose consequences. You make decisions and the decisions decide the consequences that come to you. For sake of time, I want to give you six decisions. They are major decisions that all champions without exception have made and continue to make in their lives and destinies. Whether you want to be a great man of God, a great sportsman, a great leader, a great businessman, you want to follow the steps of our Father in the Lord, or any visionary leader world over that you seem to have admired. Can I tell you this? These six decisions, if understood, if mastered, and if you make these decisions consistently, I give you a guarantee based on the integrity of scripture and the formidability of the laws of life, you will not fail. I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. I cannot force you on what to choose, but I can advise you, if you want to live, you live by choosing life. Are you ready for these decisions? I want you to lay your hands on your head in one minute and pray from the depth of your heart. Let my spirit man be open to understand these truths. As you are laying your hands on your head, you are not only laying your hands on yourself, you are laying your hands on all the destinies connected to you. You are laying your hands on your children and your children's children. You are laying your hands on the congregation that the Lord will give you to pastor in the nearest future. You are laying your hands on all the people who will be part of your company and your conglomerate. Is someone praying? I obtain grace from God. Someone is praying. Grace from God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Decision number one. The first decision in this conference that I recommend for you to make if you want to surpass ordinary standards, if you want to excel, if you want to become a voice in this generation, if you want to serve the purposes of God effectively, is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress. Write it down. The first decision that you must make is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13 the bible here says and you shall seek me and find me if you seek me Jeremiah chapter 9. Let's look at verse 11 down to 13. I'm looking for the scripture that says, You will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart. 29. I meant to say not 9. Forgive me. 29, 13. Jeremiah chapter 29. And you will seek me and find me when ye shall search for me jeremiah 29 and verse 11 with all your heart everybody say all your heart there is a way a man can commit himself and make a decision that as far as my spiritual life is concerned my fire will never go down 
as far as my prayer life is concerned as far as my word study life is concerned as far as my passion for God is concerned the older I become the more on fire I become it's a choice there are many people today who have chosen not to be serious with God God respects their choice but you also will not get the destiny of one who is on fire with God can I tell you the truth righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne you cannot give God five minutes of your destiny and expect the mantle of one who gave God everything God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 Jesus himself was teaching and he began to encourage us based on that which was written in the law to love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind when you give God all and you make a decision to seek him and make quality spiritual progress I assure you you have made a noble decision and you have begun to sign in for a destiny of greatness say amen. amen hear me there are all kinds of distractions in our world today respectfully speaking the abuse of social media all kinds of mundane relationships that may not be pointing us towards destiny and all sorts of things that distract and destroy people I have said before you life and death every one of you at the sound of my voice and those following watching by way of internet social media by way of TV station I need you to know that the first decision in order of priority that you must make if you want to surpass ordinary standards and live an excelling life is the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress everyone shout it after me say in the name of Jesus from today I make up my mind to love Jesus to seek Jesus to pursue my spiritual progress without fail listen do you know what that means that means you must obtain grace and the discipline to wake up and pray when it is time to pray when your body tells you I am sleeping just hear the generations that you are sent to begging you and say wake up for our sake wake up for our sake wake up for our sake the healing anointing that must come to you in the place of prayer don't let sleep kill us the child that I'm supposed to receive is tied to your spiritual seriousness. Don't let me die barren. When you hear the voice of those who are calling on you, it gives you the energy to wake up. Hear me? Every time you feel lazy to study scripture, just remember that there is a multitude of people saying, please, if you do not feed us the witches and wizards and the yokes and the curses in our background will destroy us and God has tied our destiny to your life do not fail us can I tell you this if you do not live with a sense of destiny you will not have the passion to pursue your spiritual life you don't pray as a matter of convenience you don't fast as a matter of convenience many of us the enemy to your destiny is slumber you can sleep by 8 and wake up by 12 as a young man no you will not go far God is not a herbalist you will not go far don't just keep admiring mantles and anointings behind mantles and anointings let me tell you the truth is 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 there is blood dripping on those altars testaments of prayer testaments of fire testaments of fasting testaments of staying with the word the decision to be serious with God is not for men of God the decision to be serious with God is for saviors 
provided you know that there is a destiny connected to you it will jack you up to say lord reveal yourself that mantle and that unction that must land upon my life for the sake of my generation i will pay whatever price it will take if you're still with me say amen, amen. hear me for some of you here while you are listening to me the holy ghost is speaking to you and saying this is what i kept showing you in dreams this is what i've been trying to tell you that you need to step your spiritual life because where i'm sending you to the pace of your spiritual growth cannot build the stamina to stand before pharaoh can i tell you the truth what some of you call delay is not delay is that god has gauged you and seen that you are not strong enough to face what he's sending you to face so he will withdraw your progress to help you so that you do not collapse before pharaoh because you did not build capacity please sit down we live in a generation that is obsessed with admiring anointed people and just believing that you just bring 1,000 or 5,000 and people just lay hands and transfer everything. Let me be honest with you, my dear people. There is a track record in the spirit that you cannot buy with money. It is a track record you have to pay with God. You want to tell the sick be healed and they are healed? You want a generation to hear you is more than the ability to speak English. No. There must be a hunger. I'm praying that something will land on someone this morning. That every laziness that will not allow you to take God seriously. And if there is any spirit fighting your spiritual progress, in the name of Jesus, I declare those altars are scattered right now. Hear me. There are many of you, you are the first person to rise in your family to this level. Now you want to go down and allow the devil destroy your family. God is counting on you and saying you are the one your mama was praying for you for 20 years before you arrived kanasha lakata brande ke barako sige de belegatia kariza sige de berenso barasha la haskadabala the decision to make spiritual progress when it is time to pray, you lock yourself. Every day you are doing it. You are signing that spiritual register. The realm of the spirit is seeing you. Demons are seeing you. Principalities are seeing you. They are bearing witness to the fact that you are preparing for destiny. Are we still together? in one minute while you are standing i'd like you to pray lord every laziness every laxity in the name of jesus let me go let me go someone is praying a generation is waiting for me a generation is waiting for me i obtain grace depending on my spiritual health Depending on my spiritual advancement. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Very quickly. Sit down. Mm. Number two. Number two, the second Kali Sali Barusia. I just saw light. I'm seeing the number 17. I just saw light coming. Please, I want you to just help them. 17 people, I just saw the power of God like light just coming on them right now. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, where are these people? That light that must rest upon your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it come upon your destiny right now. 
let it come upon your let it come upon your destiny right now please help them just help those under the anointing let it come upon your destiny right now the Lord is bringing you into a new season. Please sit down and be very sensitive if you can. Just help those under the anointing. Hear me, the Lord is speaking to someone here. The Lord is saying, I have been beckoning on you to come closer and to get deeper with me. But right now, while you are seated, the fire of God right where you are, just help them. That fire is landing on your destiny right now. There are ladies here, you are carrying that fire. There is a fire that has been looking for your apakatosh kedebadakata. Sit down, please. I have to hurry up. Please write. Just help those under the anointing. We are going to pray. The waters are already been stirred here. Number two, the second decision that you must make is the decision to contend for superior belief systems. The decision to contend for superior belief systems that is the second honorable decision you have to make for your destiny the decision to contend for superior belief systems through renewal and transformation write it down please the decision to contend for superior belief systems you will never rise above and beyond your mindset you will never rise above and beyond your belief system. Your belief system represents your paradigm. Your belief system represents your viewpoint. It says, son of man, what seest thou? It says, the rod of an almond tree. And he said, you have seen correctly. I will hasten my word, Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 10 to 12. I will hasten my word that you have seen to perform. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, write it down for reference, three scriptures. Proverbs 23, 7, Proverbs 4, 23, and Psalm 78 and verse 41. I'm hurrying up for time. Proverbs 23 and verse 7, Proverbs 4 and 23. It says, as he thinketh in his heart, he didn't say so he will become so he already is the bible equates your destiny to the quality of your thoughts every one of us here comes from different backgrounds sociologically speaking spiritually speaking economically speaking and these contexts they have a way of conditioning our mind was it not Nathaniel that said about Jesus, can anything good come out from Nazareth? You may have come from a background where no one has risen. You have never seen favor in display. You have never seen speed. And chances are that when God wants to favor you, when God wants to bring speed, there is no provision in your mindset to allow that happen. A man can limit God psalms 78 and verse 41 i found out scripture and it has blessed me through the years they limited the holy one by saying can god make a wilderness can god make a way in the wilderness as powerful as god is as mighty as god is the mindset of an individual can limit his performance in the life of that person so the second decision is the decision to contend for superior beliefs 
I told you that everything you are looking for is also looking for you. But not this version of you. There is a version of you your future is looking for. You have to evolve into that version. You have to grow through renewal and transformation. Mentality. Mentality can decide the quality of destiny. Number three. The third decision that you must make is the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment. Write it down, please. The third quality decision you need to make is the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment. In other words, the decision to live a purpose-driven life. John 4.34, please help us media. The decision to discover and fulfill your assignment. John 4, 34. Jesus said unto them, the Bible says, my meat, that means my satisfaction, my fulfillment is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. Everybody say to do and finish. One more time, say to do and finish. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, Paul was speaking and he made a quotation. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will, O God. It has been written concerning every one of us. But whether you fulfill what was written or not, is a, is a, is a subject for another day. Make up your mind to discover and to fulfill your assignments. Now, we don't have all the time, but can I have two or three people here? Just any two, no, you, you see, just two or three people here. Let me use someone, please give me anything to use, a rod, a mic, just anything, a book, anything at all. Now, all of you stand, watch this. You stand here, you stand here, watch this. This is a baton. Please stand in front here, sir. Stand in front there. You stand in front of him. Now watch this. This is a baton. And God has given it to him. Hold it, sir. My friend, all of you stretch your hands backward, ready to receive. This man, if he runs his destiny well, he will be able to hand it over to this man. Is that true? If this man fails, run well sir and hand it over to him you see that his efficiency has made another person to fulfill destiny but you sir refuse to run this man has refused to discover his place and run with that baton he's wasting the destiny of another person because he has refused to run every time you refuse to find your place in life someone else is a relay you are not the only one running If God raised you to be a man of God, all the pastors that were supposed to come up after you and under you because of your inability to answer the call, you are punishing another man's destiny. If God has raised you to be a kingdom financier, he raised you to be a financier so that that church will now be built because of your refusal to obey your assignment, that church is never built and the souls that should be saved in that church never come to Jesus. There are implications when you do not fulfill destiny. Please give him back again. Let's repeat it now. This represents the generation of our grandfathers and great grandfathers in the faith. They handed it over, give it to him. There is a generation running with this now. Now, my friend, when he gives it to you, refuse to collect it. Now, he's giving it to him. This is what most of our generation are doing. Collect it, take the mantle of healing, the mantle of breakthrough. Collect it. And we're saying, no, 
were busy typing phones, typing internet, making all kinds of things. Collect this time is going. Destinies are suffering. And this man is refusing. My friend, walk away and leave him. This is what is happening. Our fathers are passing this baton and saying, young people, a time will come you will be the one on the stage. Prepare, collect this mantle, collect this baton in business, in ministry, but you are refusing. But in this conference, my brother, run back and come and collect this. Run with speed and come and pick it. This is what is happening to someone now. Lift your voice in one minute and declare, I must fulfill destiny. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray from the depth of your heart. I must find my place in life, find my place in destiny and fulfill the same. name we pray for in Jesus name we pray I've given you three decisions now number one to make exceptional spiritual progress number two to contend for superior belief systems number three the decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment number four are we still here the fourth decision According to 3 John 1 verse 2, 3 John 1 verse 2, the decision to be healthy. Now look up. This may look like a very simple decision, but it's a very, very serious decision. The decision to be healthy. Your physical well-being is important for the fulfillment of your destiny because no spirit is a legal occupant in the earth without a body you need a healthy body it says beloved i wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health prosper and be in health the decision to be healthy can i tell you this there are many people today who are 40 years but respectfully speaking are looking 80 years because they spend their lives deteriorating their health carelessness over their bodies eating anything drinking anything i myself did not used to pay that much attention to my health i was not careless with my health but i didn't give it that level of intention especially those who work in miracles signs and wonders usually they ignore their health just because the anointing flows through them to others you must be careful you have a responsibility under god to walk in health it is the reason why vices like smoking and drinking and liquor and all these kinds of things are dangerous because it's a way of mismanaging your health a body has thou prepared for me if you do not have a body even if you have a vision it will not come to pass did you hear what i said if you do not have a body even if you have a vision it will not come to pass your vision needs a body to find expression that means from today you must make a decision that I am going to be healthy. Part of the ways that you choose life is to choose to be healthy. You wouldn't believe it, I'm not a medical doctor, but I can tell you this. Your health starts from the discipline to take clean water. Clean water alone can save you many, many years of degrading your health. The moment God begins to bless you, you get a job or money begins to come don't just invest in clothes invest in your health if you buy a nice cloth a nice designer in a body that is dying soon people will come and carry it away because you will be dead 
hear me one time i went to minister in this nation and one of the fathers of faith drew me into his office and he made a statement that i would never forget it was a powerful conference and he drew me into his office and he said my son let me teach you something pay attention to your health he said africans kill their prophets and it was it it made such an impact in my life now it's good to stretch yourself don't be lazy but you must know when you stretch yourself beyond limit there are many people today it is not demons that are destroying their health it is just because they do not pay attention can i tell you this haven't encouraged you to be hard working let me be sincere with you when you are tired rest when you are hungry eat learn this especially for young people because we are surrounded by so many people who want to show that you can stretch in the spirit we we derive a lot of pride from showing that you have stamina in the spirit there are people today who have ulcer and it's because they did not know how to fast with wisdom there are people today who are destroying themselves there are people today who have gone to pray and stretch themselves beyond proportion and it affected their brains they have bipolar right now they are in the hospital there is a balance to everything the Bible says to do everything with moderation pay attention to your health do not feel embarrassed and don't feel less of a Christian if you are investing in your health if you are with me say amen humorously I'm seeing that there are meals being served while the message is going on and some of you are almost embarrassed you don't want to collect it collect it oh collect it oh oh they are not serving oh I see oh they are just positioned don't don't collect it now <laughs> but when it's time to collect it collect it yes after the message you have it I know some of you will feel like you are falling your hands spiritually how could I be so anointed when Jesus was hungry he ate when Jesus was tired he slept eat and rest in this kingdom we live by bread and words bread and words not word alone bread and words please sit down we have to wrap up are you learning now very quickly number five the fifth quality decision you must make in order to emerge as a champion and influence is the decision to be financially independent write it down i hope you are not shouting just because you like money the decision to be financially independent you know can i be honest with you many people shy away from the reality of this because and i know why Usually when it has to do with the issue of finances, there are two groups in the body of Christ. There are those who ignore it and say it's not important. Don't worry, you just serve God, he will sort your life. And then there are those who almost, it's like an extension of lust and carnality and everything is money, money, money from start to finish. Both are wrong. But I can tell you based on the authority of scripture, the decision to be financially independent is a noble decision and it's also a spiritual decision proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 may you never forget this scripture for the rest of your life in jesus name proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 why do you need to contend for financial independence here is one of the reasons the bible says the rich ruleth over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender did you hear that 
A rich man will rule over the poor, even if he's a poor prayer warrior, even if he's a poor fasting giant. For as long as you are poor, you will never be able to taste the corridors of power and influence. It takes economic empowerment to lift the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. Hmm. Do not join the ignorance where people find comfort in believing that everything will be all right if you are not financially empowered. What we challenge in the body of Christ is lost an affinity towards material things, not the availability of resources. By the time money becomes a God to you, by the time you become obsessed with money, even to the detriment of your relationship with Jesus, now there is a problem. Materialism is not having materials. Materialism is the influence of materials on your relationship with Jesus. And you don't need to have money to be materialistic. There are many poor people who are materialistic. They don't just have the money to manifest it yet. Please pay attention to this. There are many people who are called of God today, but they are unable to do much for the kingdom. This conference right now, is happening because there are financial resources to drive the conference it is not only because jesus is here jesus is here and we are grateful but what if the gen and the sound system goes off and you cannot hear what if the lights are out this magnificent um ground that we all are sitting here it took resources to make it happen as i have toured around this amazing camp I have seen all kinds of projects ongoing it takes resources if you embrace poverty you will also embrace weakness can i tell you this make up your mind that what my parents could not give me they may be sincere people they did the best with what they knew to do but in the name of jesus i'll be able to give my children what i did not receive don't transfer the same pain and hardship to your children make up your mind that under my watch the house of the lord will never suffer because these hands will bring resources for the lifting of the name of jesus the decision to be financially independent write this for reference as we prepare to wrap up ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 6 i'm telling you this scripture is a very powerful and prophetic scripture ecclesiastes chapter 9 maybe we should read it i know our time is up but let me just read it very quickly ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 we are reading just four verses 13 to 16. ecclesiastes chapter 9 from verse 13 to 16. the bible shows us in a very graphic way the danger of not contending for financial independence this wisdom have i seen also under the sun and it seemed great unto me what is the wisdom read on with me now it says there was a little city and few men within it and there came a great king against it and beside it and built great bulwarks against it 15 now there was found in it a poor wise man who was found in that city a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man it's in your bible 16 then said i wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. it takes wisdom and wealth to be had are we learning make up your mind 
that you are going to walk in the reality of the blessings of the Lord not for some competitive selfish carnal reason no I am telling you this when God grants do you know we are not teaching on finances here but many of the people who talk on finances with, with all due respect largely many people are not getting it the way it should be taught this is why it keeps fueling carnality and lost in people you prosper even as your soul prospers when there is anything wrong with your soul everything you have gathered or acquired is nonsense but let me give you this there are only two assignments of money in the life of an individual number one the first assignment of financial resources is as a tool for time redemption the first assignment of money in your life is to redeem time the unit of destiny is time you can use money to buy time number two the second assignment of money in the life of a believer a kingdom-minded believer is for efficiency so money only has two assignments in a believer's life time redemption and efficiency if god grants you resources and you buy a car what is that car doing redeeming time that's it if god grants you an opportunity and you move from a tenant to a landlord it has only helped to make your life efficient instead of smuggling six children in one room now you have a three four five bedroom you can even create a prayer room you can create all kinds of things so it gives you the convenience to live an efficient life everybody say time redemption one more time say time redemption say efficiency this is why believers desire the availability of financial resources for time redemption and for efficiency if you are able to pay the school fees of your children without thinking about it and you can send them to any school without the psychological stress of raising school fees one naira one naira per time it has helped your life to be efficient so you can focus on the things of god as a man of god when god blesses you financially he has given you time so you can lock yourself for three days seeking his face and not worry about bills efficiency when people are taught prosperity from a correct kingdom perception or perspective they become blessed and their hearts are never connected to those things finally have we been blessed so far the only promise you are going to give me is that you will use everything that i'm teaching you here that that the next time god will grant us the grace to see when i look at you where you used to be i will not be able to find you there again that you will be a thousand times over the final decision pay attention our time is up the sixth is the decision to build quality destiny relationships write it down ecclesiastes chapter 4 from verse 9 to 12 please give us that scripture the decision to build quality destiny relationships can i tell you this the command be fruitful also means be relational because the only way to be fruitful is through relationships it takes a husband and his wife to have a child two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor we are reading to verse 12 verse 10 now two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor verse 10 says for if they fall the one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone the key word is alone when he falleth for he had not another to help him up uh-huh two more verses again if two lie together they have heat but how can one be warm alone verse 12 i wish you can see it for us to read together verse 12 and if one prevail against him two shall withstand him 
and a threefold cord is not quickly or easily broken look at me one of the greatest things that you can do with your life and the times that God has given you is to invest in building quality relationships can I be honest with you many people do not have relationships that were intentionally built many people have circumstantial relationships circumstances just brought certain people into your life there are three levels of relationships number one there are general relationships you meet people every day and the bible mandates you love them believers non-believers alike you meet them every day number two there are seasonal relationships for instance your classmates your schoolmates within the time you are together in that institution or that training taking that course you are together and you may be friends but the third and the highest level they are called destiny relationships or covenant relationships these are people who believe what you believe the foundational pillars of your convictions are also what they believe and you have a covenant of fellowship that you are going to be there for one another through the thick and thin. you will not just be there to stand together that when they are on the ground you will come and stand by them and help them and lift them can I tell you this woe betides a man if everybody around you is a psychophant just looking for your money or your titles or anointing they will tell you because men are intrinsically selfish however there are still sincere people and my prayer is not just that you pray and say God give me one be one first hallelujah look up please we're wrapping up when jesus walked upon the earth for as long as he was celebrity jesus there were crowds looking for him some were looking for him for food some were eyeing all kinds of things hoping that one day when he becomes king of kings and lord of lords he will put james and peter all kinds of motives but when Jesus handed himself to die, all of them ran away. When Jesus was going to Golgotha, my question, where was blind Bartimaeus? Where was the woman with the issue of blood? Where was even Lazarus who was raised from the dead? Everybody ran away. Can I be honest with you? You must obtain the grace and the courage at this level in life to edit your relationships. Don't treat everybody the same. They are not the same. Categorize your relationships into outer court, inner court, and most holy place. Not everybody should have that kind of access to your life. Are you learning wisdom here? Someone comes into your life and in five minutes, you've told him everything about your destiny. You've told him everything about your past. You've told him that, oh, your dad has a problem with your mom. And tomorrow they go around and betray you and backstab you and destroy you you need wisdom it is not every visitor that comes to your house that you take to your bedroom no there are visitors who will stand at the gate there are others who will come to the living room but there are others you can literally take them to your bedroom and sit down because you know that even if you are in prison they will come and stand with you and say we die together can i be sincere with you this is one of the lessons that I have learned, respectfully speaking, in the life of our fathers of faith. They may not have many people around their lives, but my goodness, God has given them the gift of men. There are men who will stay like the mighty men of David in the cave of Adullam. Let me ask you a question as I round up. If you are in trouble today, God forbid, is there anybody in your life that you can call by 2 a.m and say sincerely there is an issue with my rent now it's not like i am careless and the person says over my dead body for as long as you are alive i'm alive 
I will not see you go through this. Hear me. If there is nobody like that in your life, you are sitting on a time bomb. Can I be? I want to be honestly. Even when Saul wanted to kill David and frustrated him, David said, Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? I have learned this as a lesson gleaning from the wisdom of the fathers can i be honest with you this is an assignment to everyone here write a list of the five most important men in your life people you know today who love you and will sacrifice anything for you invest in those relationships don't generalize and treat everybody the same way no there are people today, if you call and say, I, I need, I need 500,000, they will tell you, well, I will help you. How could you put them in the same category with someone who can stab you with a knife, even if they give you? Learn wisdom. I'm teaching you this. There are people today, if you call them and say, look, I see that lust is already growing in me pride is already growing in me they'll say no not when i'm there let's declare a three-day fast i will stand with you i will pray with you can i be honest with you as you are rising in life and in leadership you must start praying not for a crowd but for this man lord from the crowd select this man bring them to my life there are men who will vow and say even if you go to be with the lord today your children will not beg for bread when they are alive can i be honest with you there are many of our parents in old age today they did not spend their days searching for quality destiny relationships and investing in it and you would see some of them move and they will tell you i lived in us for 10 years i know this one i know this one but they are still in a position today where not one of their children can have a job anything money can buy relationships can also buy relationships are currencies don't use money alone to buy things use relationships to buy things this is one lesson i've learned in ministry as we pray man of god young man young woman hear the word of the lord it is time for you to build quality relationships this is one of the reasons why God brings a convergence of a conference like this. So that you can have men and women. Some of you, your destiny helper is the person seated near you. He may not be wearing the kind of shoe and the kind of cloth you see. Be careful where you look down on people. You may be looking down on the next 10 years of your life. Learn to honor men. Learn to respect people respect those above you respect your contemporaries respect your subordinates and you have bought the future i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i set before you these six master decisions that decide the destinies of men i cannot force you but my advice even this afternoon is choose life rise up on your feet someday you will listen to this message again but this time around you will listen to it with your children all around your table someday you will listen to this message but you will listen to it with millions and billions in your bank accounts someday you will listen to this message again but you will listen to it with mantles upon your head someday you will listen to this message but you will listen to this message alongside a congregation of a crowd like this listening to it but i pray for you that someday you will not listen to this message and regret and say why did i not make a decision one prayer point i speak over your life 
and we're done for this session father i obtain grace from heaven you have given me the keys that can change my life i obtain grace lift your voice and pray i obtain grace i obtain grace the lord has spoken once i pray that you will hear and hear again go ahead and pray that decisions decide destiny the decision to make exceptional spiritual progress the decision to contend for superior belief systems the decision to discover and fulfill your god-given assignment to live a purpose-driven life the decision to contend for your health and your physical well-being the decision to be financially empowered to be financially and economically independent finally the decision to build quality destiny relationships hallelujah hallelujah praise the name of the lord appreciate the time i apologize i know i've stretched us a bit but i want to pray one prayer right now for sake of time i promise you that i was going to pray for the sick sadly we may not be able to do that i'm sure that another time god will grant us grace but i want to speak over your life and your destiny i want you to believe it men are made by the words that come upon them you don't have to kneel please i want you to believe we did not invent this strategy the fathers have spoken over us and it has brought us to the grace that we we have today this is a baton we are not the inventors of it we only received it too i want to pray for someone maybe not everybody but i know that there is someone scattered in this congregation who has fasted who has prayed who has prepared their hearts and you are saying sir you don't have to come out you don't have to come out right where you are i want to pray for you even those under the anointing just help them as i pray you don't have to bring them out but please whether you are an usher or not anyone under the anointing just help them i want to pray for you truly there are graces and there are mantles we are made by the graces that rest upon us i do not want to end this session without speaking over your life i want you to receive every prayer I want to activate certain dimensions in your spirit man some of you have seen this in your dreams some of you have seen it in your visions some of you know that the hand of God is upon you right now I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead at the count of three that fire let it come upon you and ignite you set you on fire to do marvelous things are you ready one two three take that fire right now 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 help them please now hear me hear me i don't know how possible this will be listen i've graciously been given about five minutes or so now please if someone is under the anointing i just want to bring them out here just out here if you can it will require both the ushers and every other person i want to pray for you at the count of three i want you to shout jesus the name that is above all names hear me as you shout that name such fire will ignite you and you will be set ablaze for many of you there will be activations of the gift of the spirit are you ready now at the count of three i stand upon the grace of our father and i declare to you let there be that impartation one two three shout jesus take that grace take that anointing take that grace that empowerment fire upon your destiny fire upon your life in the name of jesus you will never be the 
same. Never be the same. Never be the same. I ignite your prayer life. I ignite your destiny by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Step into a new season in the name of Jesus. Step into a new season. Now hear me. In Jesus' name. Now listen carefully. Please help them. We're praying. Hear me. There are people here. The call of God is upon your life. And God has been working upon you. I want to pray right now. That fire is coming upon you. Apostolic fire. Prophetic fire. At the count of three. Anyone here who has the call of God. One. Two. Three. Take that fire. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Hear me. In this end time, there are women that are rising up after the order of Deborah. There are women that are warriors in the spirit. I pray for you, wherever you are, may this fire come upon you right now. May this fire come upon you right now. There are some of you, hear me, some of you are kingdom financiers. You represent the next generation of men and women that God will be trusting with resources. I don't know where you are, but everywhere you are under the sound of my voice, I stretch my hands. May that anointing come upon you right now. Receive that anointing now. Receive that anointing now. Receive that anointing now. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. Listen, 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 please look at me at the count of three. You are going to shout that name again. Every embargo of delay sitting on anyone's to say you will not go forward by the privilege of the grace of our fathers in the name of Jesus at the count of three may the mantle for speed come on your destiny are you ready to shout Jesus one two three shout Jesus delay be broken delay be broken delay in destiny fulfillment be broken delay be broken upon your life speed upon your destiny speed upon your life hallelujah hallelujah now hear me hear me there is a grace for prayer that makes a man's altar to come on fire i don't know who did praise for this grace but i stretch my hands katasko delegata the grace for prayer an intercession take that grace now take that grace now the fire upon your altar let it keep burning day and night there is a grace for faith 
for. Hear me. There is a real grace for favor that can make men come to attend to your needs. I stretch my hands. You may not have an uncle. You may not have an auntie. You may not have a sponsor. But right now, in the name of Jesus, upon this altar, I prophesy any destiny helper that needs to arise and locate your destiny. I command, may they find you now. Hallelujah. Please go back. Please go back. If you are not under the anointing, just go back. Please. Don't worry. Just go back. Everyone will receive. The only people out here are those under the anointing. Don't worry. Now hear me. I was given five minutes to pray for the sick. I want you to lay your hands, any part of your body where you are trusting God for miracles. At subsequent sessions, you can testify. But I want to pray for you right now. Lay your hands very quickly. I believe in miracles. I want you to agree with me as I pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity plaguing your body, your destiny, I command that it lets you go right now in Jesus name. Now I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, be healed right now. Be healed right now. Migraine headaches be healed in Jesus name. Blood, help them please. Blood conditions be healed in the name of Jesus. Every genotype here, sickle cell anemia, we change that genotype right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone under the sound of my voice called Barin, I stand upon this altar and I speak over your life. Nine months from now, return with your miracle children. Every blood disease, every blood condition, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Partial or complete deafness, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Partial or complete blindness, be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Heart palpitations, be healed in Jesus' name. Ulcers, be healed in Jesus' name. The Lord is healing someone of pile, pile. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Whether I mention your case or not, every ailment in your body, let it bow to the name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. We're wrapping up. Let me speak over your destiny. Every door that has refused to open over your life and destiny. Right now, I stand upon the privilege of the grace of our Father. And in the name of Jesus, I speak to that door. Ephata, be open now. Of destiny be open now. Hear me. Every embargo of shame and reproach over anyone's life and any family by the mystery of the blood of Jesus we tear off that veil of shame from your life. Failure at the edge of breakthrough that you always see it but never handle it. 
right now in the name of Jesus everything your eyes sees may your hands handle it in Jesus name I pray for those of you who are students hear me if you are a student here in the name that is above all names the finishers anointing the grace to finish with honor I impart that grace upon you in Jesus name some of you because of the circumstances that have happened around your life there has been delays around your life by now you would have gone far but something delayed you I don't know who has been delayed in life by prophecy I push you to the next season of your life <laughs> hallelujah finally by the privilege of God's election of grace and the honor of standing on this altar let me join my faith with your intercontinental pastor and our father in the Lord to prophesy over the youth the entire youth arm of the redeemed Christian Church of God everything that is alive grows therefore I stand on this altar and I declare by this time next year be ten times better than you are by this time next year be ten times better than you are regardless the region regardless the province be ten times better than you are spiritually financially hallelujah hear me and out of the people standing here may it please the lord to raise the next generation of leaders in this nation hallelujah thank you so much for this opportunity i want to say a big thank you to the intercontinental pastor the team of ministers and to all of you there are... hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you